with action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired, for this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy, and Andy Clyde as California. Here's Hoppy now with another new story. This one we call The Wastrels of Juarez. It began one day when California and I rode into town from the Bar 20. We'd come in because of a shortage of flour and bacon at the ranch. But when we saw the crowd in front of the bank, grim-faced, milling around like steers in a draw, we forgot all about food for the moment. Something going on here, Hoppy. Something kind of peculiar. Yeah, there's Jed Kramer. Maybe he knows what this is all about. Ho, boy. Ho. What you got here, Jed? Trouble? Yeah, that's exactly what we've got. You've got it, too, if your money's in this bank. It's gone broke. I think we better get down, California. You're not serious about the bank, are you, Jed? Sure I'm serious. The place is closed up, ain't it? But it's Saturday afternoon. The bank has a right to be closed. Who started this rumor, anyway? I don't know, but if it's such a rumor, why don't John Newcomb show himself and deny it? Hey, just a minute, just a minute, man. John hasn't been feeling well lately. You all know that. You should know something else, too. This bank has never let you down in 25 years, and neither has John Newcomb. Why don't you forget this nonsense? You've all got things to do. Why don't you go do them? You still feel worried next week? Come in and talk to John about it. Well, how do we know that's such a good idea? If this bank has gone bust... Oh, but that... it hasn't gone bust. Uh, you know me. You know I wouldn't give you a false argument. I'm sure the bank won't go bust. Well, uh, okay, Hoppy. We'll forget it for now. But I hope you're right about it. Come on, everybody. Let's go on get about our business. Come on, let's get on. Boy, for a second or so, I thought there was going to be trouble. I thought maybe... Hey, California. Psst, over here, Hoppy. This side of the bank. What are you doing over here? Why all the secrecy? It's a uh, Mr. Newcomb. He wants to talk to you. I want to talk to you, and I want to thank you, Hoppy. You've given us a chance to breathe freely for the moment. Come in, will you? How did a rumor like this ever get started, John? Something that could cause a lot of trouble. Yes, but I'm afraid we're going to have to face that fact. What do you mean? Hoppy, much as I hate to admit it, we're unable to meet our obligations. To put it bluntly, the bank is broke. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Wastrels of Juarez. Arriving in town from the Bar 20, Hoppy and California find an angry crowd milling before the locked doors of the bank. Rumor has it that the bank has failed, but Hoppy, challenging the rumor, learns from John Newcomb, the bank's president, that it's true. The bank is totally without funds. But, John, that means practically everyone in town is ruined. Yes, I know. There'll be foreclosures all over the area. People trying to raise cash by turning against their neighbors. I've seen it happen before. But why, John, it can't be that no, you... No, Hoppy. It's something I had no control over. Our cashier absconded with more than $50,000. Practically our total assets. Lewis Kane? You're not being serious, John. Lewis Kane and a new teller we had, Ned Clayton. I don't think you've met him. When did you find out? They left this morning. I'm told they took the stage to Rock City and then headed southwest on horseback. Southwest? Well, that'll take them to El Paso, maybe across the border. Yes, and you know what that means. There isn't a law enforcement officer anywhere who could do anything about it. Someone has to do something about it. There are kids in this town who will go without food if we... Well, John, I'm going after them. I've been hoping you'd say that, Hoppy. You better keep it a thin hope, Mr. Newcomb. If them fellas get across the border, then there ain't much anyone can do about it. Uh, this teller of yours, John, what does he look like? Big man, blonde. I wish we had a photograph, but we don't. Well, we know what Lewis Kane looks like anyway. We'll move out right now. You'll tell him at the bar 20, won't you? I'll tell them. And uh, Hoppy. Yes, John? Tuesday is a holiday. Legitimately, I can keep the bank closed over Monday as well. 
And then there's some money of my own I can transfer into bank funds for the rest of the week. But after that, if you're not back... I understand, John. We have to be back with that money by a week from this Monday. This, uh, El Paso, huh? It's a mighty big town. Too darn big for all the walking I've been doing. No luck, California? No luck at all. Nobody seems to know nothing about Kane or that Clayton fellow. I'm beginning to think they never come here. I've drawn nothing but blanks myself. Mr. Newcomb said that Clayton fellow was a blonde. Uh, maybe we ought to just start looking for yellow-haired six-footer. Well, there's one sitting over there. Somehow he doesn't have the look of a bank teller. Not the way he's wearing that six-gun. Uh, Hoppy, you're being flagged. The bartender. He's a-waving at you. The bartender? Good. I was talking to him a little while ago about Kane. Maybe he remembers something he forgot to tell me. Let's hear what he has to say. No something, Hoppy? Uh, we're being given the eye by that blonde fellow with a gun. That's a hopeful sign. Maybe we'll scare up something yet. I'd like another sarsaparilla, bartender. Sarsaparilla coming up. How about your friend? Oh, uh, I'll take some of that cactus chloroform. Uh, <laughs> my partner says he thought he saw you motion to me. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I got to thinking about them fellas you're looking for, and my memory got to speeding up a little. There's another gold piece. Maybe that'll speed it up even more. Well, uh, there was a couple of fellas in here who might be your men yesterday. Yeah? I, uh, <clears throat> I couldn't say if one of them was a blonde, though. They both kept their hats on. Uh, the older one kept squirming around on his feet like he'd been doing a lot of riding he wasn't used to. Oh. Neither of them said much, but they asked me if I knew a good place to stay in Juarez. Across the border. Oh, uh, I've been afraid of that. Did you tell them about a place in Juarez? Well, I told them about the Guadalajara. Guadalajara, huh? Yeah, yeah. Juarez is the toughest town in North America, and uh, Guadalajara's the toughest place in Juarez. Ah, uh, so I've heard. But upstairs, they got rooms, and they're pretty clean, and I might say... You might say what, Joey? Oh, it's you, Harlick. Yeah, what were you going to say, Joey? Uh, no, 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 nothing much, Harlick, honest. I... Always talking, ain't you, Joey? Uh, yeah, but... But I, I never mean no harm, Halleck. I, uh, excuse me, got a customer down here. I... What's your handle, mister? Cassidy. Hop along, Cassidy. Yeah, I've heard of you. My name is Halleck. Yeah, I've heard of you, too, from the Grass County Range War. You and your partner were looking me over a minute ago. Why? Color of your hair caused that. Blondes are kind of rare down in this country. Mm. Joey! Uh, yeah, yeah, what do you want, Harlick? Come back here. I, I, I gotta clean the dust off these bottles, Harlick. I... Better come back, Joey. Harlick, you always get me wrong. I I didn't mean nothing. I was just talking... Give me that and... bottle. The bottle? But, but, but this ain't your brand of stuff, I Harlick. said give me the bottle. Well, all, all right, here. Uh, bend your head this way a little. Harlick, no, no, not with that bottle. It could kill me. I said bend over. Better put the bottle down, Harlick. I'll show you where I'm going to put the bottle. I'm going to put Harlick, it right no! in... I'm sorry, Harlick, and I couldn't just stand here and watch you hit him. Fast man with a gun, ain't you? Real fast man. Shooting a bottle out of a man's hand. Not much to that. No, of course not. And I said I was sorry. I'm pretty fast with a gun myself. I've heard you are. Well, you might keep it in mind, especially if you decide to go to Juarez. Because I'll be in Juarez, Cassidy, waiting for you. The toughest place in the toughest town in North America. Well, it looks like it and sounds like it. Well, what are we going to do now that we're uh, here? Circulate around, will you? See what you can pick up in the way of information. Right, Hoppy, but uh, I'd like to say something first. If you sit down at any of these tables, make sure you pick yourself a chair with its back to a wall. <laughs> Hello, Harlock. Looking for a game? Not exactly. Well, we're playing a little draw. Nobody's getting real hurt. Sit down. Ah, uh, watch. Watch? <laughs> no cards and you drink sarsaparilla. 
Makes a man wonder why he'd ever come to a place like the Guadalajara. Maybe I enjoy the sweet, fresh air that swirls around here. Well, <laughs> every man of his own taste. Fella next to you is Jim Boyne, an hombre with no visible means of support. If you look good, you'll see he's a blonde like me. I've already noticed that. The lad shuffling is Clyde Marple. Medicine salesman down seeing the sights. Hmm. The way his luck's been running, he'd probably like to deal him off the bottom. But he ain't that good with the cards. <laughs> you can see he's a blonde like me, too. Gents, meet hop along, Cassidy. Hiya, Cassidy. Nice to know you, gentlemen. Harnick, uh, your disposition seems to have improved since we met in El Paso. I can't help wondering why. Well, maybe it's because I found out why you're so interested in hombres with blonde hair. What's all this talk about blondes? Well, take a look around, Marple. See any other light-haired men in this place? We're all there is. I know. I, I look real careful. Why would you be so interested in looking? I was looking because I knew Cassidy was looking. He wants to find a fair-haired hombre real bad. Why? Why don't you ask him, Marple? Maybe he'll tell us. Why do you concern yourself in this, Harlick? Maybe I'm the fair-haired hombre you're looking for. Yeah, maybe you are, but... Uh, uh, Hoppy, uh, can you break away uh, for... A... Sure, if you gentlemen will excuse me. Oh, sure, sure we will, Cassidy. But uh, come back, won't you? We'd like to see you again. Find out something, California? I think I found out about Kane. He's here, in one of the rooms upstairs. The one at the street end of the hall, on the left. He could be there right now. Good. Let's go and see. You better wait out here and keep me covered, just in case. All right. Come in. I'll be right here, Hoppy. Well, looks as though you're all ready for trouble, Kane. I heard you were in town looking for his Cassidy. No, don't come any closer, or I'll pull this trigger. You don't need that gun, Kane, not with me. You're not going to take me back, Cassidy. I've got a man who'll stop you from doing that. Clayton? No, not Clayton. This man's going to see me safely through to Mexico City. Then it's Europe and a life of ease. Sure you don't mean a life of being scared and sorry and repentant? Does Clayton know about your new partner? Well, what difference does that make? You're not very sure of yourself, are you, Kane? You're not sure of Clayton. Maybe Clayton and your new partner are working together. Against you. Uh, you're, you're just talking. Ah, uh, you hope I'm just talking. Why don't you give this up, Kane? The folks back home don't know what you've done. Not yet. I'll give you my word that they won't know. You'll turn back that money. Mm, well... The bank needs that money. The whole town needs it. If you'll go back with me voluntarily, I wouldn't be surprised by what you could have your job back again. My... My job? Well, you... You honestly think that? Wasn't such a bad job, was it, Kane? No. It was a good job. A respectable job. And if I hadn't been such a fool, I... Everyone makes a mistake once in a while. They don't always matter if you correct them right away. You... You really think it would be all right if I went back? We can saddle up in a few minutes. We can go right now. Well, I'll... I'll have to get the money. Clayton and I... We hit it. I... I'm glad you came, Cassidy. Come, we'll go and get the money, and then we... Kane! That shot! Uh, where did... He got Kane, huh? Is he dead, Hoppy? Hardly knew what hit him. And there, the money, did he tell you where it is? No, and the only person who knows is that teller, Clayton. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Wastrels of Juarez. Hoppy has crossed the border into Juarez 
searching for $50,000 embezzled from the bank in his hometown. He has only a short time in which to find the money and return it. If he fails, the bank will be forced to close its doors for good, bringing ruin to most of the town's population. Only two men had knowledge of where the money is hidden, and now one of these men is dead. Whee! I'm glad that's done. Hot work, burying a man in this country. Yeah, but I think Lewis Kane would thank us for it if he could. A man running away with money at his age. Plum foolish if you ask me. I don't think Kane would have taken the money if it hadn't been for Clayton. Yeah, that bank teller. We talk about him, we don't even know what he looks like. Except that he's blonde. So is Harlick blonde, and that Marple fella, and the one called Boyne. Well, one of them has to be Clayton, and we've got to find out which one before it's too late. And the best place to do that is back at the Guadalajara. And something tells me it's going to lead to trouble. <laughs> Five minutes, she said. You've been in that office a half hour. A little business deal I had to make. Business? In a place like this? What kind of... Hey, hey, your guns, where are they? That was the business. We came away from home a little suddenly without too much cash. So you put up your irons for a loan? Hoppy, in war is, that's like signing up for suicide. Uh, here, you better wear mine. No, I'll be all right. I uh, hope you're right. But there's that fellow Harlot to worry about and... Uh, uh uh-uh, uh, here he comes now. So you got him, didn't you, Cassidy? Caught up with him and you plugged him. If you're talking about Kane Harlick, I had nothing to do with his death. I'm talking about Kane, and I think you had everything to do with his death. You were looking for him, weren't you? That doesn't mean I killed him. It does to me, Cassidy. You wanted that money Kane had with him, and I'm saying you got it. How did you know about the money? Everybody in Juarez knows about it, and I'm still saying you got it. You're working yourself into a rage, Harlick. Why? For two reasons, Cassidy. Because you killed Kane and because I don't like him. He's going to throw down on you, Hoppy, and you without your guns. Better let me take him on, huh? No, just sit tight. All right, Cassidy. I'm waiting for you to make a play. Now, hold it, hold it, Harlock. A Hoppy ain't wearing guns and... uh... Oh, he ain't. Well, now that's just too... (laughs) Hoppy, you did that with my gun. You drew it from my holster. You'd have killed me, wouldn't you, Harlock? You were going to draw him when you knew I wasn't wearing guns. No. Better leave yours on the floor. I'll give it back to you later when I think you've cooled down. All right, Cassidy. But this makes it twice you've bought me. The odds are all against you doing it the third time. He's a bad one, Hoppy. The kind that'll dry gulch if he gets the chance. And he knows about the money. Huh. I'll bet his name ain't Harlick at all. I'll bet he's Clayton, the uh, bank teller. He could be. Or he could be the man who was going to help Kane get into Mexico City. I don't know. And I can't afford to make a mistake. We just have to wait. And we have to watch all three of the blondes until the one who's Clayton gives himself away. Suppose they all decide to leave town before we find out anything? Or suppose they all go uh, separate? Uh, let's not think about that. Let's just think about you getting back into a card game with them. That's when they'll talk. That's when the right one might make the wrong move. <laughs> Cards, cards. <laughs> That's all I've ever done since I come down here. It makes me feel like a wastrel. Right now it seems to be paying off for you. You got most of the money on the table. You and this California, yeah, huh, Ray? Yeah. And it the truth. Well, this is going to be my last day in Juarez. This evening I'm crossing the border into El Paso. Well, maybe I'll go along with you. I'm getting kind of tired of this place. Boyne said he's leaving, too. Uh, let me have three cards, Marble. And let's not mix them up too much. Three cards. How about you, California? Uh, I- I'm standing pat, just like my neighbor. Uh, if you're born in California, stand pat, which means they could have a lot of stuff. Or they could be bluffing. A lot of people try bluffing around here. But you never bluff. Is that it, Harlick? That's right, Cassidy. I never bluff. All right, California, what are you going to say? Well, uh, I'll, uh, I'll bet ten. Let's see now. California bets ten, Boyne stays with it, which means they ain't bluffing. Well, I think I'll stick around two. I'll raise it five. Ah, it's your turn, Marple. 
What are you going to say about all this? Well, I don't have much left. Win or lose, this is going to be my last hand, but I'd like to see what all you fellows are crowing about. So I'll call you. Okay, let's see. California's got a full house, ladies high. Boyne has a full house, too, but not that rich. Huh? That leaves it up to you, Marple. Well, it's like this. My tens might not be as glamorous as your queen's, California, but I've got four of them. I'll say that's good enough to take everything on the table. Well, well. First decent hand I've had all evening. Come to daddy. That'll set you up for a few more rounds, Marple. No, not me. I've been needing a steak like this to pay my bills and get out of this town. I've got to get back to selling medicine. And I'm going tonight while it's cool. Not a bad pot, Marple. How much you got there? Well, let's see. It's 10, 20, 40, 60, 80, 90, and 5. 95 round shining silver dollars. <laughs> you did all right. So, that's all for the game, huh? Well, let's push over to the bar for drinks. You heard that, Hoppy? They're all leaving warriors. Yeah, I heard it. And one of them's got that money. We can be sure of that. But which one? If they scatter, we ain't got a chance in the world of finding it. We still got a chance. A good chance. Because this card game just showed which one of them is Clayton the bank teller. <laughs> It's almost two in the morning. I've been trailing a man. Without your guns? Oh, you should have waited for me. I bought them back with my winnings. Here they are. Good. Maybe I'd better strap them on right now. I might be needing them. Who you been uh, trailing? You'll see for yourself in a minute. But we'll have to be quiet about it. Come on. Now what? Stand clear of the door. I'm going to crash it. Uh, all right, but... Uh... <laughs> It's locked. You ain't going to be able to get in. I'll get in. Watch out. Don't try anything, Marpo. Maybe I should say Clayton. Hoppy, the money, it's on the table. Bank, wrapping, still around it. You'll never get away with this, Cassidy. I've got Hollick in it with me now, and Hollick has his men here. You'll never get out of town with this money. Maybe not, Clayton, but we're going to make a try for it. Scoop up the money, California. Get into that bag he has Why, there. you... Hey, what's going on up there? Hollick, it's Cassidy. He's taking the money. Come on, California. Let's get moving. <laughs> Marple. I'd never forget it was him. Wish there wasn't so much moonlight. The money safe? Practically back in the bank. Whoa, boy, uh, hold it, Hoppy. What's the uh, matter? Bunch of men up ahead. Harlick and his gang. Can we go south? No, they'd get us for sure that way. We'll have to run their gauntlet. Maybe we can get by before they saddle up. Right with me, Hoppy. Let's go. Yippee! Get her going! Get her going! Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Hoppy, I can't believe it. I can't believe you're back. Look at that clock. It's 20 minutes past opening time. I was just about ready to go outside and tell everybody the Cattleman's Bank had gone broke. Uh, I guess I'm a little late, John. I'm sorry. Late? Why, you're the greatest sight these eyes of mine have ever seen. <laughs> Here, John, you better get this in the safe. Thanks. It's all there with $300. I guess Clayton used that up gambling. Too bad. And then there's another $5 you'll have to send to the Guadalajara Bar in Juarez for a door lock I had to shatter with a bullet. I'll be very happy to, Cassidy. <laughs> oh, Henson, open up the doors. And you can tell everybody that this bank is doing business as usual. Hoppy, you've saved the future of this town. Come into my office. You're going to have to tell me all about it. Yeah, but first she's got to tell me something, Mr. Newcomb. Something he's been holding out on me all the way back here. I don't see why I need to tell you anything, California. You were there with me the whole time. Now, Hoppy, enough's enough. Uh, if you don't tell me how you knew that Marple fellow was really Clayton, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, well, I'll start drinking sarsaparilla. <laughs> you were there at that card game. You saw everything that went on just as well as I did. Hoppy, what Well, am... all right. Guess I'll have to tell you. It was those coins, all the silver dollars that Marple raked in with that big party one. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember the silver dollars. Uh, there was 95 of them. I, I even watched Marple stack them. But, uh, All what a... right, there it was. There what was. Marple was no professional gambler. 
Remember? He claimed to be a medicine salesman. But he stacked those coins quick and true without even taking time to count them. He was able to do that because he was used to stacking coins. As a bank teller has to be. Well, well, I'll be doggone. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, maybe I ought to start drinking sarsaparilla. Maybe that's the stuff that makes you so gold darn smart. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hoppy and California bring an end to the wastrels of Juarez. And all because of Hoppy's alert observation and some silver dollars. On their next venture, they go on one of the toughest and roughest drives of their career. It's called Gambler's Luck. Try to be with us. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Wastrels of Juarez was written by Buckley Angel, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>